You come from a profoundly religious background, don't you? I do. Is there a connection between what eventually happened with you at a level of mental health and that religious background? And then just to throw a monkey wrench on top of the monkey yeah. wrench. Okay, I'm going to try to explain it simply what is actually a very complex I throw my subject. Second, I was going to throw my second wrench first. <laughs> oh, there's two wrenches. There are two okay. wrenches. Ready? Okay. The first is I want to know the connection between your religious background and where you ended up mentally. Right. The second is I kind of want to tease something that needs to come up in the conversation. There's a lot of literature these days about the so-called de-churching of America, the increased secularization of America, the turning away from faith just generally across the board. I, as a Jew, frankly, find the term de-churching a little chauvinistic, but okay, we'll let it be. It's like, hello, there are non-Christians out there, but okay. So on the one hand, I'm inviting you to comment on the religious background that you come from and how it played into it. On the other hand, I'm inviting either of you to comment on whether in a religious perspective or in the community affiliation that we get from churches, there is in fact something that will contribute sense of community to people's mental health. Yeah. So my journey is a very personal and individual journey. I, w I was four years old when my parents got visited by a Christian religion and they accepted that religion and I grew up in that religion, so I didn't know any better. But what I found out later, many years later of suffering and turmoil, is that I'm, even though I am a person of faith, I do believe in God and I move by faith. To this day. To this day. But I'm not a religious person. I don't sit well with rules and structures. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my distress, not knowing that this was me. The, the, the proverbial trying to fit the square peg Abs into the round hole. Absolutely. That was my, my issue. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that. So instead of, because of my strong faith, I couldn't really look into myself and say, hey, maybe you just don't belong in this religion. So what the mind does, it tricks you and it pushes you into anxiety, it pushes you into a, a severe depression, and it helps you collapse. So you start <laughs> cocooning. <laughs> that was my experience. That was your experience. Yeah. You know what? A new understanding of a word has just come to me, and I want to check it out with both of you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you kind of had a bipolar existence, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You had the role you were supposed to play, the family and culture Absolutely. that you were supposed to fit into. Mm. And over here is the real human being, Pedro Diaz, <laughs> later known as Peter Diaz, <laughs> okay? But am I right that there was a Absolutely. sort of a bipolarity to your existence? Absolutely, and this was my issue. I had ticked all the boxes and I was good at it. I was, I was an elder in the congregation. You know, I was good. And yet I was not happy because I wasn't living my real life as such. And of course, as part of my journey, I thought, well, this is it. Religion is done. So does that mean I don't believe in God? And for a few years, I was like, oh, you know, well, God doesn't like me because I've led my religion. Obviously, he can't like me, but, but I still believe in him. I still feel a connection. I still feel his guiding hand. So to the, other, to the other stuff that we were talking about, I believe that religion has got a very important role in society. Religion can hold society together. And I think part of the problems that we, can, we see now mm -hmm. is that religion has taken a third, a third step of importance for people sometimes, you know? It's funny that you say yeah. third step because there is the idea of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Yeah. And in a way, what you did was integrate. Synthesize, exactly. You integrated. I have a question for you. Oh, go ahead. Okay. No, but that's a difficult journey to go through. Yeah. And there's a lot of turmoil. And when we're talking about mental health, we often talk about these metaphors of people going into the cave or into the forest or into the hole, and they need to kind of figure out how they're going to synthesize that um, so they can 
come out and recover. And there are, as we said earlier, mm. so many stories of people who have come through that process. And when they've studied them, because academics like to study everything, <laughs> there's two themes that The come academic out. and you never, it's never, never die. Like no. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they find these two themes that keep coming out in people's stories, concepts of spirituality. The other one is sexuality that none of the professionals ever want to talk about because it's kind of taboo and we don't want to go there. We just want to focus on that medical kind of approach, but it's so important for so many people. Mm. So it has to be a kind of conversation on the table to be had. Have you, have you said and that? I, I just want to make a side note. People can experience the symptoms of mental health distress um, through physical things that are happening in their body. For example, you can experience the symptoms of schizophrenia if you get given a medication and then all of a sudden you start hallucinating. That's basically schizophrenia. Or you can experience depression with a number of medications that people re receive le regularly. Some of them don't respond well to it. But this is not an illness. Mm -hmm. It's just a response to something. Mm -hmm. uh, women, can, uh, women and men, we can be hormonal and that can also produce yeah. distress. Yeah. We've got postpartum depression as well, and prepartum depression. In effect. But that is completely different to the, to the other aspect that we're talking about, the existential crisis that for some reason we used to talk about it and it was strong before the 80s, and now we don't tend to talk about it. And that's why so many people have got problems believing that you can actually recover because they don't understand that mental health is at core an existential crisis that needs to be resolved. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week, so when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.